Hi everyone, welcome to the History of Football channel. Today I'm doing another video as part of my Forgotten Football Grounds series. In the past I've done videos such as the Baseball Ground, Vetch Field, Bandon Park, Filbert Street, The Dell. I recently did Millmore or Millmoor Stadium, former home of Rotherham, but tonight I'm going to be doing the Victoria Ground, the former home of Stoke City, the Potters. The Victoria Ground became Stoke City's home in March 1878 and the first match at the ground was a friendly against Talk Rangers on the 28th of March 1878. Stoke City won the match one goal to nil in front of 2,500 spectators. The ground took its name from the nearby Victoria Hotel and was originally an oval shape built to accommodate a running track and used by the local athletic club. On September 8th, 1888, Stoke played their first ever football league match at the ground and it ended in a 2-0 loss against West Bromwich Albion. Stoke suffered financial difficulties and dropped out of the league in 1908 and attendances varied during their time out. Stoke got back in the league in 1919 and the ground had now been improved considerably. There were two good sized grandstands and an extra wooden one which was situated opposite the main stand and could hold 1,000 spectators. The players' changing rooms were set in the corner of the ground in the early days and a stove was constructed to keep the players warm. During the early 1920s, a new main stand was built mainly out of wood and was erected alongside the hut near the end of the ground and could hold 2,000 supporters. By 1930, Stoke had added City to their name and the Bootham end was terraced and leader covered and consequently the ground lost its oval shape. In 1935 when the likes of Stanley Matthews began playing for Stoke the crowds got bigger and the Butler, Butler Street stand was built giving seating to 5,000 people. In front of the seats was a small paddock room for another 2,000 and it took the ground capacity to around the 45,000 mark. Floodlights were installed at the ground in 1956 and Arch rivals Port Vale marked the official switching on ceremony by playing Stoke in a friendly match on the 10th of October 1956. In 1960 another new main stand was built and the dressing rooms were revamped. In the summer of 1963 concrete was laid on the paddock terrace and it was the Stoke players who helped lay it as part of the team bonding scheme. More improvements continued in the 1960s and the ground remained in good condition until January 1976. However, during January 1976, the Butler Street stand suffered significant damage when part of the roof was torn off during a heavy storm. As a result, Stoke had to play one of their home matches at Port Vale's ground, Vale Park, on the 17th of January, and the Victoria ground was reopened on the 24th of January in time for Stoke to play Tottenham in the FA Cup. The final improvements to the ground were made during the 1980s with the Stanley Matthews suite being opened as well as a new club shop and offices. With the Taylor report of January 1990 requiring all clubs in the top two divisions of English football to have all seated stadiums by August 1994, the club drew up plans to meet the requirements at the Victoria ground. In spite of relegation to the third division in 1990, as the club was intent on re-establishing itself in the top two divisions, this was achieved three years later. However, after a few years, Stoke chairman Peter Coates instead decided to move the club to a new lo location. And so in 1997, Stoke left the Victoria ground after 119 year for their new 28,000 seater stadium, the Britannia Stadium at Trentham Lakes. The final league match at the Victoria ground was on the 4th of May 1997 against the first opponents at the ground, West Bromwich Albion. Stoke won the match two goals to one with Graham Kavanagh scoring the final Stoke goal. The Victoria ground was demolished in June 1997 and the site stood empty for over 20 years until a housing development was built in 2019 named Victoria Park with the streets named after former Stoke players and managers. Looking at some records which happened at the Victoria ground, the highest attendance ever recorded at the ground Come on the 29th of March 1937, 51,130 people attended to watch a match against Arsenal. The biggest ever league victory 
recording in Stoke City's history happened at the Victoria Ground. This one come on the 4th of February 1937 and just like the first opponent there and the last opponent, this time it were West Bromwich Albion again. Stoke City beat them 10 goals to 3. The record league defeat at the Victoria Ground is also Stoke City's biggest ever defeat and it come on the 14th of September 1889. Preston North End were the opponent and Stoke City were beaten 10 goals to nil. The Victoria Ground also hosted European football during the 1972-1973 UEFA Cup campaign. Stoke City played against FC Kaiserslautern and lost 5 goals to 3 over 2 legs. One of the legs was played at the Victoria Ground. And in 1974-1975 Ajax were the opponent and at the time, Ajax were probably the best team in the world, or one of the best teams in the world, winning all them European Cups. And uh, it finished in a one-all draw at, uh, the, at the Victoria Ground, so a very good result for Stoke City on that night. The highest ever recorded attendance for a Stoke City match, which was in the FA Cup, also happened at the Victoria Ground on the 2nd of March 1946. Stoke City played against Bolton Wanderers and 50,736 people attended that game. So that concludes my video on the Victoria ground today. The home ground of Stoke City Football Club from 1878 to 1997. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. Let me know which ground you'd like to feature next. Uh, there's quite a few grounds to view on the playlist if you haven't already i've done a couple of videos in the, in the last week or so more than i have done i'd see probably in the last month or so so uh, thanks to everyone that's recently supported the channel subscribed liked the video and commented it's been much appreciated and um i enjoy making these videos and hopefully you do as well so anyways this is history of football signing off and i'll catch us all later in the next one all right, it's tightly bye for now.